Good evening, my friend. Welcome to WDW. Really, after 15 years, you'd think I'd be able to say the name of my own show. Welcome to WDW Radio Live. I am the inarticulate Blue Mangello. You are my friend. These bells are going to be annoying in about now. Welcome and thank you for joining me. I know it is truly the most wonderful slash hectic slash expensive traffic crazy time of the year. So thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day, out of your night, out of the line at Walmart and or Target to join me. If you're watching live, please say hello, introduce yourself, invite and tag a friend to come by and watch it. If you're watching on the replay, I'm not always going to have these jingly things on, but don't forget to join us every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here. I'm old and blind, so the reading glasses have to come on. Melanie Jones, Mariah, Eric, Joseph Jowdy, William Krasinski, thank you so very much for the ornaments that you sent. Beatrice Dennis, always a pleasure to see you. You've been here, like, not here, here, but like here since the very beginning. Jack Fussell, good to see you, brother. Uh, Matt Shane, thank you very much for all you guys do over at MSK Digital Media. If you're looking for help with your social media marketing, websites, newsletters, all that jazz and fun stuff, MSK Digital Media. John Jones, Carrie, it was so good to see you. Next year is going to be an amazing year for you, I know. Dylan Ironheart, the man with probably one of the best names in the box. Like, that's a superhero name. What's your name on Dylan Ironheart? Like, it almost sounds like a DC character name, but I dig it nonetheless. Uh, Andrew Yensid Nail Nalil. Yep. Yensid. I'll just going to go with Yensid. Luis, uh, Luis Ramos, who loves sending me the best-looking pictures of food and video throughout the day on Facebook Messenger. I know when I see your name, I better not watch and open that hungry. But I appreciate you sending me the virtual goodies from the Northeast. Uh, Lisa Milam, good to see you. It was so nice to see you last week, two weeks ago. I've completely lost track. John C. Jones. I was not feeling well earlier today, and I did not make it to the UPS store in time to get there and back for the show. I'm going first thing tomorrow morning, brother, I promise, and thank you for thinking of me. Cody Pierce, what's up, brother? <coughs> Stephen Conti, always nice to see you. Uh, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Or it could be Jesus Matos or Matos, but I'm going to just say that Jesus is in the box tonight. I mean, Jesus is always in the box, if that's what you're, but you know what I'm saying. Um Last week, uh, Jim Orohoski, always, always in the box. I cannot wait to your local so we can celebrate the holidays uh, together. Daniel Dinitz, 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 despite being new to the nation, already a big fan. So I'm going to teach you one thing right off the bat, Daniel. You're never, ever a fan. You're always a friend and part of my extended family. I am not a fan of the word fan. I'm also not a fan of that pile of mail sitting over there, so I'm going to move this camera over just a little bit. Oh, it's Lillian Disney backwards. I have a tough enough time with the English language forwards. I won't try and do it backwards. Chris Reynolds, good to see you guys as well. Jennifer Lynn Parker, Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, so I will tell you, in the interest of full disclosure, this is not what I had planned for tonight, nor is it where I had planned for tonight. One of my favorite, favorite things to do, and if you caught last week's show, you heard me talk about it, and I didn't necessarily commit to it because things like today happen, not just the incessant migraine that I can't seem to get rid of, but um, weather sometimes plays a factor. So one of my favorite things, okay, these have got to stop with the jingle. Um, one of my favorite things to do during the holidays is go and rent a golf cart at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. So this morning... After about 45 minutes on hold, I finally got through. I finally got a, a golf cart, and then I finally decided to check the weather and saw that, you know, the it better be monsooning outside because I waited until like 5.30, quarter to 6 to pull the trigger. Um, there was a 75% chance of rain. It was already drizzling. I said it just is not conducive to going around in a golf cart, going to look at the holiday decorations. I don't want to get sick. You don't want to get sick don't want the kids to get sick. I will try and do it again another night in between Christmas and New Year's because it's so beautiful. And I think it's one of the best expressions 
by guests, especially of um, the holiday season, that it's something that, that I think everybody should see. And it's one of my favorite things to do. You run to go- the golf carts are like, I think it's $59 or somewhere around there. Um, normally you get it for the entire day. And like you live for 24 hours, we would have just done it for for a few and taken you guys around live. I will still do it. Um, I will still do it. I don't know exactly when. I don't want to commit to a date as yet. I'll sort of quickly look at my calendar. But, uh, yeah, maybe maybe even on the 26th. We'll say, oh, I want to talk about Mary Poppins next week, though. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do two shows next week, two nighttime shows. But so that's where we were supposed to be tonight. That is what we were going to look at and talk about. And that's why I said, or I was going to say, to sit back, relax, put on your Spider-Man Snuggie, grab a hot chocolate or toddy, big blanket, and we would have enjoyed um, the holiday decorations of Fort Wilderness. Instead of looking at that, you've got to look at this. I apologize for now for that. Debbie Anderson just left the storybook dining with Snow White. Yum. Uh, I actually have another friend who's there. You may or may not know. Lisa Denoto Glasner uh, is not here because she's there. And she actually just texted me and said um, that they're having a great time. So I'm very, very curious to hear um, what the initial reviews are. Although I will tell you, I will not review it until I give it a few weeks to sort of work out the kinks. You know, that's my thing. I just don't think it's fair to go in and judge a restaurant the first night, the first, especially this is a tough time to open. It's the busiest time of the year. Excuse me. It's for all intents and purposes, a brand new, completely new dining experience in terms of theming, flow, menu, servers, characters. If if people say, hey, I had a bad experience at first night, I'm going to say, well, you, it's because you went the first night. We'll give it a little bit of time, and then I promise you we will go back and do a um, – we will go back and do a live review. Um, Sean Briley said, rented a car to Fort Wilderness for a night to check out the lights. Really a great time. I agree with you. Like I said, one of my favorite things to do, I think it's a it's, – it's a, you can probably fit six, or as we've done in the past – eight to ten people on a cart. I think four to six is probably what you want to do, but it's worth the fifty-five, sixty dollars. It's it's such a nice night. The the play is you go to Trails End for an early dinner, you do the golf cart for a few hours, then you go back <clears throat> excuse me, you go to <clears throat> sorry, you go to um Crockett's Tavern if you want to sort of hang out late at night. Kids can go and play nearby or if you want to have a drink or a coffee, that's um that's the way we are going to do it. Uh, Carrie Krieger, as weird as it sounds, I actually know that Tom Holland had his wisdom teeth out this week. Um, I, I, I do follow him on Instagram, and, and one of the few people's stories that I sort of pay attention to. Paul Clark, I did see the menu, um, and I agree that the menu does look really good. I've also seen a couple of early photos from it, as well as a couple of the character interactions. So I will um, I'll wait to... to make a full review and judgment until I have a chance to see it on my own. Um, Steve Garrett, excuse me, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I, again, I won't spoil it, but I will tell you this and I'll save a full review. It is the first true film that is a comic book movie. The pages of a comic book come to life on screen It's not just one of the best – first of all, it's going to win – I'm sorry, Wreck-It Ralph. It's going to win Best Animated Film of the Year. It's one of the best superhero movies, period. Like, far and away, blows away Amazing Spider-Man and the original Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire's – I hate even calling it a trilogy because of Spider-Man 3. Although, it does does make references to to some of those earlier films – but it's smart, it's fun, it's funny, it's unique, it's super well-paced, it's well-voice acted. Uh, I loved it from beginning to all the way to the end. Um, if you leave the movie before they start to kick you out and the lights come up, then you're doing the movies wrong, especially when it comes to Marvel and Disney. Very, very, very important. You stay till <clears throat> you stay till the end on this one. I will be seeing it again. Um, poss- my son and I are trying to figure out when we can go um, this weekend and see it. So uh, Jessica says first, <clears throat> excuse me, she wants to see Mary Poppins this weekend. Uh, I think that is a great idea. Uh, I, again, I said on the live show last, actually I said on the show this week, I am going to, um, 
I am going to save my review until other people have had a chance to see it. That's why I'm not doing it tonight because it just came out today. So when you're done here, go to the movie theater, grab a big popcorn and a water and a lot of napkins and a couple of tissues. Um, go see Mary Poppins because we will talk about it next week live. We'll have I will have my full review. More importantly, I want to hear from you what you think of the film. Some early reviews are in. I, again, I won't sway you one way or the other um so i will save my comments and thoughts but hopefully you enjoyed the interviews this week and of course in the in the spirit of giving and friendship you are um sharing that out with your friends uh lou like spider-man no way i know you would never believe that i um that i like the spider-man and i love the spider-men and the spider-gwen and the spider-girl and the spider-ham and the Spider-Man Noir. And tw- I loved all the Spider-Men um, in this film. So, Carolyn cannot wait to see Mary Poppins. Again, I really want to hear your thoughts uh, next week on it. So, I don't want to just sort of uh, broadcast my review. I want it to be a conversation. We'll do a call-in show. This way you guys can share your thoughts. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of time to... Uh, to go to see it. Amanda Patton, thank you very much for the kind words about the interviews. Um, it was a thrill not to get, only to get out there to see the premiere and, and go to the, to the press conference, but to get a chance to sit down with the songwriters and the director and then also get the, the copy of that um, conversation between Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman and Richard M. Sherman. Uh, oh, what I should do is I should show you part of your... If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because this week you have another chance to win a Mary Poppins and Disney prize package. So part of your prize package is in this backpack, which is part of your prize package. And I'll just sort of give you a little hint. So the Mary Poppins Returns, it's a limited edition of 3,000 set. So... And you also get, in this very folder, right here, here I'll do an old Johnny Carson, it is a signed, autographed photo of one Richard M. Sherman. Okay, I've got to get rid of these. I'm just, I can't take it anymore. I'm with the spirit of the season, but it's freaking me the freak out. So, um, if you want to play for a chance to win, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited, um... But it's it's not void anywhere that I know of because I'll ship anywhere. Even though somebody won from Italy two weeks ago, and I think it cost me forty three dollars to send the package. Um, I've got to start sending more digital and less physical stuff. So um, yeah, so the uh, the ornaments are very cool. You get the backpack, you get the Richard Sherman signed photo. Uh, what I would love for you to do though is what I can hear you say it. All I ask is that you please help spread the word about um, this. Uh, um, about the contest and the interviews this week. I saw the look in your eyes when you said popcorn while talking about Mary Poppins. Paul, I love, I, I am, I'm a popcorn guy. Um, it is, it's a, even like if I've just come from eating, you've got to get the popcorn, no butter, and uh, freak to freak out, Nick Hazeltine. So, um, let's see, let me just go back here. I know, I'm Marcus, I'm sorry I was being so jingly. Yeah, so Judy Pepperini, this is a, um, I don't know that you can still get, from what I understand, these are no longer, I don't know if they're sold out on the Disney Store website. I know they don't have them here at Disney anywhere, because I, World of, I was at World of Disney a week or so ago, just to see if they had any, and they did not. Um, let's see, $43 will take a month and a half to get there. Yeah, I know. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for posting. How is Art Smith's Homecoming? How is it not? It's uh, Art Smith's Homecoming is undoubtedly one of the top three restaurants in disney springs it's it's a tight race for number two obviously boathouse it i almost have to sort of like grandfather boathouse in as a legacy because it's always going to be number one homecoming is a very close number two uh chris good to see you as well paul hoffman none of that fake butter man i just like it salty and crunchy because then it gets all cold and i it's yeah you know what i'm talking about so kenneth johnson good to see you too uh, yeah, so the butter that's on there is enough of the butter for me. I just like this salt and, and that's it. So I'm a pot. I get the big bucket. Yeah, whatever. And if you're not an AMC Stubbs member, you should because it's it's so totally worth it. So um, 
So, yeah, so we'll talk about Mary Poppins next week. If you have your thoughts, if you have your views, save them. You can call in. You can comment here, whatever you are um, most comfortable with. I get a large cup of butter and I look like a large popcorn <laughs> And a large cup of butter, and I sip it with a straw. Jeremy Goff, you are not only talented, but you are a funny guy as well. Um, let me know how those arteries are um, doing for you. Mark Floramonte the second, not the first, but the second. Good to see you. Uh, had Art at, at Art Smith's the Hallelujah Biscuit. Oh, and Sean Briley, I'm with you. Uh, uh, Sunday brunch at Art Smith's is really, really nice. I've I've been there twice before but i haven't reviewed it yeah i actually haven't done a review i'm not talking to anybody but i do this for a fact i haven't done a review of art smith's yet we've been live from there we did the late night there um but i think we have to add that right after i have a lot of places i need to eat uh, after the first of the year so get ready you know sit six pack eight pack 12 pack somebody call levi's they're gonna have to i need like extension i need bigger stretchier pants <clears throat> Sorry. Um, sometimes, sometime could you do family reviews of the buffets? Yeah, you know, I realize that I haven't, I don't know that I've ever done, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe we'll go to Trails End. Uh, next week is going to be a zoo. I can't do it then. But we'll go to Trails End, and I want to do Trails End. I want to do Boma for breakfast and dinner. I want to do... There's a lot of buffets, so many restaurants to eat at. If only there were people that would want to go, I'm kidding, that would want to go and do live dining reviews. Jensen, obviously for research purposes, I don't like to eat. I do it because, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I can't even say that I'm doing it because I have to. I'm doing it because I love you. And I, I who am I kidding? I love to eat. So um, don't break the magic. That's right. Producer Roz over there. Yeah, people ask me all the time. Look, I get emails and messages like, who are you talking to? Like, are there people watching? Is there a producer? It's just the door. And there's a Peter Pan silhouette that somebody made and sent me because she realized it was really, really weird that I'm just talking to myself. But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's just me. So, Stacy Kipe, Keep, Kip, Stacy says, OMG, the brunch at homecoming I would choose as my last meal. That's that's a nice comfort food meal. Like if you got to go out, that's not a bad way to go. I obviously would be at at Boathouse, although I could probably stop at Homecoming for like a pre appetizer snack, and then go right in and just if I'm going to go out, man, I'm going to go out with with a huge bang. I have Drew. I have never done a review of Victorian Alberts. Uh, I have been there a couple of times. I've done the Chef's Table, um, but I've never actually done a review because it's it's not an environment that is conducive to me with a microphone sticking it in front of people's faces. Um, but maybe we'll do, uh, maybe we'll do like a chef. Maybe I'll have a contest and do a chef's. Obviously Becky has to be involved in this. We'll do a contest and we'll do a chef's table dining room. Somebody write this down. Can, so, can my producer, can you write this down? I don't have a producer. Can somebody write this down and send it to me? A live dining review of the chef's table at Victorian Alberts with like maybe I'll maybe what I'll do <clears throat> is I'll select a member of the WW Radio Nation family. That's what we'll do. There you go. I will do something where <clears throat> we'll have a contest or a drawing or whatever from somebody from the nation and we will do a a live dining review of not just Victoria and Alberts, but the chef's table at Victoria and Alberts. I'll just let that sink in for a second as I as I just wipe the drool from my face. So um, you should tour the Disney Museum and uh, Lucas Studios in Florida. So Edward, we did an adventures, <clears throat> excuse me, an adventures by Disney there. Probably it's probably 2013. So it's been five years. Oh, we need to go back. Um, I, I've been. I went to Lucas. I didn't go in, but now I, I know a couple of folks there. I don't know that we could actually do a tour of it, um, but you can you can actually go and, and sort of see the lobby and and walk in so um jeremy goff will probably not include airfare you get here and then we will uh we'll figure something out so thank you i owe you lunch for pronouncing my name right somebody screenshot that <clears throat> excuse me i owe you lunch right so we'll do lunch at victoria now so you don't owe me anything i mean lunch is always you know welcome clearly um 
Pick me will it include airfare and hotel accommodations? I don't think so. That would be something you would need to talk to the fine folks at MEI Travel, MEI and Mouseman Travel for all your vacation planning needs. We'll uh, we'll have to get details for Becky. I didn't say she's doing anything or paying anything, but I'm sure if I did a re- review of Victorian Alberts, her brain without her, her brains would fall out of her head. So, William Shrapzinski. William Shrapskin, Shrapzinski. Shrapzinski. I've got the last part right, I think. Maybe not the, the first part. So, uh, yeah. So, Chris, you fly. I'll buy. That'll be the uh, that'll be the deal. So we'll, we'll try and have to figure out a um, a time when when the winner will be there. So um, pick me, and I will find a way there. Well, you're going to move here, so it'll it'll be uh, it'll be even. Becky's not even here. To, I know, right? Where is somebody tracked down? She's in the throne room. No, not that. The other. Okay, I don't know where Becky is. I have no idea of that. But Stuart Sternberg's here. So now the party can get started. So Krupp oh, Krupp Chinsky. Oh, I wasn't even close. I got this the, the ski was about the only part of that that I got correct. So, sorry about that. I will just call you William. How's that? That's why I make sure I don't uh I don't mess it up too much more. So, um so is everybody ready for the holidays? I know for some folks the holidays have just passed. I hope that you had a very happy, wonderful and delicious um passover um hanukkah passover really hanukkah is what i meant to say i was trying to think of all the holidays that are taking place right now and it's hanukkah and it's kwanzaa and it's christmas and it's festivus and the spirit of this whatever whatever it is you celebrate i don't care so we'll just call it the holiday we'll call it christmas and just be done with it so um oh now becky shows up see we her ears must have been ringing because she knows we were talking about her not in a like oh not in a Becky puppety kind of way but in a Victoria and Albert's live dining review kind of way and it's like literally like her little must have perked up and then she pops in so I wasn't I wasn't even saying anything mean I should have gotten out of my system when I did but I didn't so Becky there's a conversation about a live dining review for. Listen, Becky, I'm going to say all the words that are going to make you happy. Live dining review with Becky Mankin, Victoria and Albert's chef's table. WW Radio Nation winner. That's I, I like that pretty much encapsulates all the things that Becky likes to hear other than I would pick up the tab. But we'll figure that part out. Um Yes, so we were talking about some of the places to do live dining reviews of, and, and um, uh, some people wanted live dining reviews of some buffets. I know that's not your jam. That's cool, but uh, I'll find some people to do the, the buffet reviews, and then we'll do the live dining review. And so I think it has to be at the chef's table. One, because we really sort of – it's a, because it's, it's a, a very small, very elegant dining experience. We don't want to be sitting there, you know – passing the microphone in front of people. But if we've got the chef's table, we're in the kitchen, the audio, the ambient audio would be wonderful. And we could really just be ourselves. Uh, we haven't quite figured that out yet. So, And the whole time I talked about it, I had, ding, this up, right there. Look, see? Juggling so many balls all at the same time. And you missed, I had Christmas jingle ball bells on. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, Becky Mankin, for my... I mean, I am mouse fan travel Christmas present too. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a festival of of mouse fanny goodness. Okay, um, let's see. Edward loves Boma for a buffet. Yeah, I'm, I want to do um, uh, Boma for breakfast, and I want to do Boma for dinner because they're two very. And I think all Animal Kingdom's so far away, but Boma for breakfast is delicious. Although, although. I'll have to do Boma and Tusker House because the last time I was like, Tusker House may be a, a spoiler alert. So uh, Danny Montenegro says, Merry Christmas from Miami. Fortunate to try the infamous Kanish from Epcot Holiday Festival a few weeks ago. What did you think? I love me a Kanish. I love me a good, like, fluffy, potatoey, Jewish 
knish with the schmear or the mustard and a matzo ball soup and a hot pastrami sandwich. Can somebody make that happen, please? Kids, go go to Epcot. Make make that happen. So, um, marathon weekend for a review. Yeah, that's it's way too chaotic. There's nothing happens over marathon weekend other than marathon weekend. Although. If you are a member, I should have a logo here. If you're a member, not of the well, of, of the cheering part of the running team, just wait because I have really, really, really good news regarding the full marathon at this year's Walt Disney World Run Disney Marathon Weekend presented by Sigma, Cigna, and Mouse Fan Travel. I mean, it's not really presented by Mouse Fan Travel, but you just wait. You just wait. So, um, oh, <clears throat> sorry, puberty just passed. Um, any meets of the month planned for February? We'll be there February nineteenth to the twenty third. I will give you a quick look and see. But February, the night, uh, no, because because where am I going? I'm going to Dallas. According to my according to my calendar, I'm going to Dallas. I'm, and I'm going to Orlando. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going somewhere, but it's also Princess Weekend. So if I'm here, yeah. Oh, no, actually, you know, I take that back. No, I take, uh, I'm not really sure. I'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I, I haven't, I, yeah. Uh, when it's time to change, you've got to rearrange who you are and what you want to be. Shut na 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 So said, and I'm quoting Peter Brady, so... Uh, Cody Hibbard, it is nice to see you. I know I owe you an email. I'm down to like my last few hundred. I'm hoping to knock them out this week um, before the holidays come and go, which is happening way, way too quickly. Thank you. Dear sweet baby Jesus, I want to thank you for the beauty and the awesomeness that is Amazon Prime. Same day, next day delivery for free. Oh, I hear the angels singing. That's good. That's why. So I don't know if you saw my post today. And for those of you who said, there's still time to do it. Like my FedEx guy came today. You go and give him a bottle of water. Give him a hug. Give him a protein bar. Those guys and gals are busting their butts. It's 72 degrees. It's not that bad here in Florida. But I know they're doing it at like 19 degrees in Detroit, in the rain, and the sleet, and the snow, and the hail. UPS, FedEx, DHL, Postal Service. You guys are busting, so I put a little basket of, of food and stuff out there for them. Um, you don't know how that little just – I saw that guy's face today, how happy he was. So go out and do something nice, or at least just go outside and tell him thank you. Give him a card. Uh, my, my postal lady wrote me a nice little note today. Like, I was, like, so touched. And my FedEx guy and I, we had a moment. Our eyes met, fist bumped, we chatted it up a little bit, and he was off on his way with a handful of candy. So – we happen to have all of his favorite candies, and there you go. So um, just a little nice, inexpensive gesture you can do that I promise will make some magic for some people that are probably getting a lot of grief and a lot of stress and a lot of overtime um, this year as well. So Darlene, um, if I ever leave water out, the Amazon guy will ask me, dude, what's with the bottle? Well, you live in Canada, so that's why. 40 days, Darlene Nagy from West Seneca, soon to not be from West Seneca, New York, will be back in uh, Walt Disney World. Uh, Colin Kendall says, how does the race weekend work for non-runners? I'm there on the same dates just as the races by chance. So when you say for non-runners, do you mean in terms of cheering or how does it affect crowds? Because for the most part, the races are done, the crowds are gone by the time the parks open. So, uh, Mike Fenton, time to put the kids to bed. Have a good night, a great week. An awesome weekend. If Christmas is your jam, rock on with your bad self and uh, make sure your kids tell your kids Sat, there's still time to get off the naughty listing. I can't imagine that they're there, but there's still time to make sure that they sort of be extra nice to mom and dad so they stay on that nice list. And uh, you never know, Santa might Santa might bring you the Spider-Man underoos that you've been waiting for. The time is not important, but you understand the point of the entire story. So. Um, <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, you're a funny dude, man. He says, Stan, chew your water carefully. <laughs> so, uh, the way I cheer may change to I are you don't tell us what's Becky. It's a good thing. 
you will be the second happy top three things that make Becky happy. You can assume what the first few are. They usually involve cocktails and clubs, often at the same time. I'm telling you, something is going to happen at this year's Walt Disney World full marathon day that's going to, dare I say, put a smile on Becky's face at 4 o'clock in the morning. So there you go. We'll chat when I see you. Uh, Marie says Santa's checking his list twice. And I know that Marie has a very close tie to Santa Claus. I don't mean Santa Claus when he's on vacation at the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, which, by the way, if you haven't seen him this year, I didn't make, get a chance to go over him. Go say hi. He's got a busy couple of days uh, coming up ahead. But Matt Shane, yeah, it's it's not the Becky puppet, Stuart Boyles. It is mimosas, mimosas, and mimosas. What do you need? What I need to do one night, and maybe I'll have to do it sort of on the sly, is you need to be out with Becky when <laughs> when it's time to order a cocktail. It literally is Meg Ryan at the diner, but with Becky and alcohol. It takes about 14 minutes for Becky to get her order out, for the the server to bring it, for Becky to send it back. An incident happens, and then eventually, I mean, but when it's good, it's awesome. Uh, and when they get it right the first time, it's it's a wonderful experience, but it's it's neat. Um, Becky, it, it honestly has nothing to do with Thor, but it's a close third. So, there you go. Santa at Disney Springs was awesome last week. It was so nice to uh, to be able to um, see Santa. Um, what is ba- Becky's favorite holiday-themed cocktail? It's fruity, and it's not just sweet. It's got to be really, really sweet, and... I mean, I could sort of go through. I could probably give you Becky's top five drink choices. I mean, well, they're all pretty much the same thing. They're sweet and they're fruity, like me. That's why we get along. See, I'm like a Becky cocktail. I'm sweet and a little fruity. Um, he says, we took your advice and looked in Winter Garden, probably found a new home. I need to take it to Boathouse. I like everything about that sentence, Keith, that you took my advice. Thank God it worked out well. Winter Garden is a great place. Winter Garden Village is awesome. Um, probably found a new home, even better. And then you sort of just cap it off with the piece de resistance, which is going to Boathouse together. I dig all that. Uh, Clark Gaines, despite some of the clickbaity headlines um, to the contrary, most likely that is um, th- those are not going to be used for at least at, at any time in the near future. They're not buying it to build Marvelville. They're not building all these things that I've I've seen and been asked um, uh, about some of the rumors. Um, sometimes, sometimes that land is purchased because they also have a certain portion of their property is dedicated to uh, conservation. And if they start to go to get close to that limit, they need to buy additional property to do that. So there's a lot of reasons why they purchase property. It's not always because they're building the fifth gate. So if you're lining up now for a villain's world, it's, I would hold off on that just a little bit. Phil Gramlick, holy smokes, blast from the past. I would, It's so good to not can hear you, but it's to see you. I hope you and your family are doing well, brother. I know... Uh, I know you guys are probably chilly up there and sad about the Eagles, as you should be, because they're the Eagles. But it is the 900-acre parking lot for Galaxy Edge. They're going to need it. They are going to need it. So um, if you think it's going to be bad here in World, just wait to get out to Disneyland, because that is going to be a very interesting... Uh, <laughs> where are they going to... How the people that I just don't know... Um, crazy crazy again don't necessarily believe all the articles that say there's gonna be two hundred thousand people lined up to get into galaxy's edge i'm taking my glasses off for effect that is not going to happen there are very very hard caps on the number of guests that can be in the park that can queue up for the park they are not going to be lined up down on santa Ana boulevard down to san diego it's not going to be as uh, i mean it's going to be bad it's not going to be that bad so um Where's Spidey? You got on your shelf? I have lots of Spideys. I have some new Spider-Mans. By the way, by the way, thank you, and I've and I've thanked most of you who have sent it individually. I got a couple other cards in the last couple of days. Like 
this I know it looks like my small intestine, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I love and appreciate and I'm so grateful for the cards and the gifts and the candy. These are these caramels are so good. And the Japanese candy. Oh, I went to open these tonight. Wait, let's try these. I don't know what these are, but there's a little icy polar bear on them. So I have to assume it's some sort of like wintery pepperminty. I don't I can't I don't read kanji yet and i probably won't in time for japan next year by the way two spots still left oh well that's odd it's this weird i don't know what color that is it's japanese color <laughs> hmm i have no idea what that is wow oh wait yes i do <gasps> it's cookies and cream. Oh, God. Japan, you are so smart. Like, it is just... Wow. That's really yummy. I'm going to finish those later with a nice little cup of tea. Yeah. Tea, emails, and that. Marcus says... Oh, it's Oreo. Wait. Yes, you're right. It's like Oreo flavored. I think that's it. I don't know. I'll, you know what? I'll find out. Did one of those... Ratty little kid steal my other one? They better not. I will. Oh, there it is. So I've got a few to try. And uh, it could it could be Oreo flavored. I think you're right. That's so good. Beer flavored. That's katakana. And that's katakana. Oh, look at you. Marcus, you're such a... Oh, that's right. I know from the nation calls. You travel everywhere. Um, God, that's good stuff. Um, let me see. So, Clark, what I think of the new seasonal tart at Woody's Lunchbox? Forgive me that I don't remember who, but somebody brought one. They brought two, not one, but two seasonal tartlets to the meat of the month at Min and Bill's Dockside Diner. I don't remember who you are, but they were very yummy, and I was starving, so they were delicious. Thank you. Um, we get carrot cake Oreos in your store today. What? Canada's crazy, like in a good way, but they're crazy. Um, carrot cake Oreos do sound good, Marie. Um, Cheryl says, I need your address as I have three. Bak you do not have any Quisp cereal. That's a cruel joke. You, If you literally have boxes of Quisp cereal, I will send you something in return. Remember Quisp, the little alien with like the thing on the top of his head? And... That's, oh, my God, that's so funny. Blast from the past. Um Wait, Heath Bar Cookies from Publix Bay. Oh, you had me at Publix Bakery. Chocolate Caramel Pretzels at Walmart Bakery. What? I am going to be so fat in 2019. Fatter. Fat I'm sorry. I'm going to be so much fatter. I've been corrected by my producer, who's nobody. Um, what advice do I have for a new Disney podcaster? I'll give you the same advice that I'll give a, new, a Disney blogger, a Disney video person, a Instagrammer, content creator, YouTuber, whatever you want to be, you go be you. Stop worrying about and paying attention to what other people are doing. Go do the the show, the blog, the podcast that you want to do, that makes you feel happy, that is of interest to you. Stop looking at your numbers. Don't look at your... I never look at my downloads. I don't. I only look like once every few months just to make sure somebody's actually listening and that it's not broken. Um, it's not important. You focus on the people that are already there. You you create like this, right? You create a sense of community. You love on the people who are there. If they like you, they will go and tell their friends and so on and so on. And that's how you build um, a community, a family, a tribe, whatever it is that you want to call it. But stay in your own lane. Go do your own thing. There you go. I have no problem. I, uh, people say to me all the time, like, why would you help another Disney podcaster? Like, why wouldn't I help another Disney podcaster? I mean, like, listen to my show first and then go listen to theirs. But there's room for us all to win. So find a great partner that can handle your many moods. There are so many ways that I could answer and respond to that. But I won't because it's the spirit of the season. And and I'm so grateful, as always, to my friends over at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Wait, for all your vacation planning needs, ding, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. 
And uh, there you go. So, but finding the right partner is important, but you don't need to do that till after you build a community first, then you start worrying about growth and monetization and all that kind of stuff. So, and if I can help you, shoot me an email, reach out to me. I'll, I promise I'll answer you back. It might take me a little while, but you know you'll get an answer from me. And I, I think it goes without saying, I'm a huge proponent of authenticity, man. Authenticity, it's not just the future of business. Authenticity is, is like real life right now. You cannot fake it in a podcast. If I didn't dig what I did, you could tell. Like you would know that fake it till you make it is BS. You go be yourself, be authentic because people will hear it. They can hear it in your voice. You guys know when I'm sad. You guys know when something's wrong. You know when I'm sick because you can tell in my voice. And if you try and fake it, people will know and ain't going to listen no more. Trust me. Not that I've ever faked it, but I'm just telling you. So, um, anyway, uh, have I ever given thought to working at Walt Disney World? Um, I, I did a long, long time ago. Um, you know, there was a, a point, but... It was never a, a serious consideration because I always sort of had my career path set out. I always knew that I wanted to be an attorney. Now I talk about Disney World for a living. Go figure. So it's a, it's a circuitous path and one that can change. Don't any of you tell me that it's too late or you're too old or you're too young or you're too poor or you're too tired or you're too this to do anything. I was an older man when I sort of made my shift and made a very hard left turn from the career path that I set out for myself, literally like when I was in eighth grade. Like the high school I chose, I chose not because, I chose the high school that nobody else was going to because I wanted the best education because I knew I wanted to go to law school. Here I am. You can make that change. When it's time to change, you can rearrange who you are and what you want to be. Shall la 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 as Peter Brady said, as we mentioned before. So don't let any, there's, there's no factor that should be able to to stop you or be an excuse it's easy to make excuses to not do stuff um the hard part is 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 putting the the walk behind the talk um you know i say this marcus as you can tell when you're hungry too that's my secret marcus i'm always hungry um so yeah so there you go uh, amanda Patton, excuse me Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all those. And in, when I say Merry Christmas, I'm including, I'm inclusive of all the holidays in there, and Happy New Year too. So, um, as I was ranting, I wasn't going back and reading. If I pay for Chef's Table, would you give me a signed trivia book, <laughs> dude? I'll give you more than a signed trivia book if you want to pay for the Chef's Table with Victorian Alberts, bro. I can eat. I'm just telling you. Like, uh, I, I'll give you books, T-shirts. Um, yeah, I got lots of stuff I can give you. Oh, wait. I have Becky Mankin's Christmas present over there. I almost, I want to make sure you can't see it in the camera. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Kids. Um, what high school in your Oh, Michelle Carter, you're slick because you almost caught me with my guard down. Because you want me to tell you the name of my high school so you can sort of reverse engineer where I went when I graduated, what the play I was in and what character I played in said grease tape. Uh, 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 not going to happen. I'm not as stupid as I look. Um, what is my favorite Christmas cookie? The one that is in my mouth. Um, I love chocolate chip cookies. I love the, those, those, somebody just brought some over the other day. The ones with the chocolate chips and the coconut and the, the graham cracker and the chocolate. I don't remember. What are those called? Like mir What are those cookies that I like called? Those miracle Super awesome, but I don't know, but they're delicious. And I like crinkle cookies. I'm not a sweets guy, but I do dig me some Christmas cookies. So, and now uh, Heather has the Brady Bunch song stuck at <laughs> in in her head. <coughs> Excuse me, Chris Reynolds, go uh, go get ready to be Santa's little helper, not the Simpsons dog, but Santa's actual little helper. And um, we'll, so FedEx will be shipping out that present. Uh, no, Becky Mankin is coming to Walt Disney World. We get to see her in person, which is even better. Like all that magic in IRL. You can't wait. Um, so, um, 
where are we going in for dinner in January when I'm there for work? My treat. Well, listen. I mean, if it's your treat, you you name the place. <laughs> Boathouse. <coughs> Boathouse is so good. Um, I Listen, th- there's not a lot of places in Walt Disney World that I would say no to. I Actually, I think now that, that um, Pizza Planet is gone, I think that was the only one I was like, hey, not great. I mean, I would, I've eaten there, obviously. Obviously. But, yeah, there's probably no place that I would say. There's a lot of new places I need to try, too. We have to do, go do... Um, we have to go do um, uh, Sebastian's at Caribbean Beach. Lots of, yeah. I'm not a sweets guy, but bring me all the dark chocolates. Now, I only use dark chocolates, as much as I did tonight, for medicinal purposes. Not like peyote medicinal purposes, but like when I get a migraine, dark chocolate, ice, um, ice, baby, helps. Um, and that's usually the only time, so... <laughs> Tim Moore, you won tonight. Um, Tim Moore says, "Here we go again. Not a sweets guy, but I'm gonna go FedEx myself a Cajun Kringle." You left out the part that it was eaten in one day. The Cajun Kringle, there was a tiny piece that survived till the next day because I wanted to have some with coffee in the morning. But yeah, so uh, Eric and the Navarro's family, it is uh, it is good to see you, brother. Hope your family is doing well. Chris just finished eating a flourless dark. See, I love dark chocolate, though. I dig me some dark chocolate. And this is the kind of year. I think this is a good time of year for sweets and, like, uh, hot chocolate, hot tea. In Becky's case, a hot toddy. You better order more alcohol. Becky's coming. Call Costco and just have them get a pallet of whatever the sweet stuff is for Her Majesty. She just, It will not be a pretty night if she's here without fruity stuff. So just get the sweetest, expensive stuff. That that's what she likes. So, um, do I recommend Blue, Blue Bayou at Disneyland? It's almost like a rhetorical question. Like you need to you switch the first. You do recommend Blue Bayou at Disneyland? Of course I do. There's not a lot that I don't recommend. Disneyland has such good food. God, I can't wait to go back for D23 Expo with Becky Menken from Mouseman Travel. Um, see, Kelly knows Excedrin migraine and dark chocolate. Dark, and you know what else too? Peppermint, peppermint oil on the temples and behind the ears, and a pressure. Trust me, it helps. It helps. Or if you get the really, really dark stuff, oh, it's buried all the way back there. There's a lot of dark chocolate there. You don't need to see what what's in there, but yeah, the the really really dark stuff, almost to the point that it gets um, bitter, um, is is the best stuff. So, uh, black licorice, yum, reminds me BRB. So, be- you know what Becky's getting? Oh no, is this what you're getting, Becky? I'll save this for you. I'll I'll actually take it off of my shelf and I'll bring it downstairs. I'll just, we need a big straw. I just need a really big straw for the the cafe. And Becky wants some of the the amaretto too. And she, I know what you want. Don't worry. I know what you want. So, um, I'm saying a big yes to Bailey's. Oi. Rita loves the candy drawer. Rita it was so nice to see you last week. By the way. Um, the really dark stuff. Taste. So you can't get like the 95% because that's almost um, – it's almost too bitter unless you pair it with something that sort of will, 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 will uh, absorb that bitterness. Um, but – so, Jerry, I saw those beignets. I'm going to try and sneak over there and do a little quick mini uh, – little mini review. So, uh, Karina, that, that, that drawer is pretty deep. That goes pretty far back. There's lots of little – emergency medical supplies in there. By medical supplies, I mean uh, licorice and dark chocolate. Um, and I think there's some stuff from... Oh, these are so good, too. I got these in... Uh, were we in Alaska? Canada? Canada. These iced tea candies? Oh, they're so delicious. And it was $2 Canadian, which is like $0.08 cents American. So, uh, Stuart Boyle's Die Hard's a Christmas movie. It's, it's absolutely a Christmas movie. Ho, ho, ho. It's a, it's far and away. It's a Christmas. 
I an ugly Christmas sweater could actually be a diehard Christmas sweater. So, Kimu Bouchard, nice to see you as well. Uh, Sophie, invisible person leaving. Blessings for a Merry Christmas. Back at you, sister. Um, let me see. Beignets were a favorite part of our five days of French Quarter last week. That's that's a good answer right there. Beignets are often the best. It's funny. I was actually thinking about New Orleans earlier today. Like, I cannot wait to go back. And this was not meant to be an intentional plug, but it will be. I cannot wait to go back um, for our cruise in 2020. We're still working on details in terms of a little pre-post New Orleans action. But not only is it a cruise in the Wonder with Tiana's place, which is awesome, and all the goodness that's the wonder, but I love, 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 love New Orleans for just oh so so many reasons. So we still got really, really good pricing, by the way, on our cruise to New Orleans for 2020. So there you go. Uh, William C., I didn't see it in theaters, but I do love me some Emmett Otter and his Jug Band Christmas. Um, I almost, I almost lost my head for a second. And started to sing. Um, my brother and I used to watch that all the time as uh, as kids. So, but I, I agree, uh, Amanda Ogle. Um, I love Muppet. I haven't watched Muppet Christmas. I think maybe we'll play that on Christmas Day. Maybe we'll have Muppet Christmas Carol playing in the uh, playing in the background for Christmas Day. So, um, there's actually a really good, and you can probably find it on Facebook. There's a video of uh, outtakes and bloopers from. Uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band's Christ- Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which is really really funny. So, um, my friend and I, Christina says, my friend and I are big fans. You're not big fans. You're big friend, not big friends. You're, you're good friends. How's that? My favorite meal at the boathouse. We went there in July. Weren't what? <laughs> okay, so Christine was it Christine or Kristen? Christina. Christina, we need to have a conversation, and we need to have a remedial meal at the boathouse. I need to know what you ordered, when you were there, and and what went clearly horribly wrong. Um, I eat at the boathouse a lot, and I have never had a bad meal there. So I I cannot make excuses, um, but I'm just curious, and we need to have a remedial meal. I Listen, I'm here to help you. I am a giver, and I want to make sure that your time at Walt Disney World is as magical as it can be. So if that means that we have to go to Boathouse together and we make sure you have a good meal to change your opinion, I'll do that for you. It is. It's what I do. It's what I live for, to help unfortunate Boathouse meals like yourself. So, Donald Nicholson finally got home from work. It is good to see you. Um, Muppet Christmas Carol or Mickey's Christmas Carol, says Jeremy Goff, who wins... Muppet Christmas Carol is really, really funny. I make my kids love, love, love Mickey's Christmas Carol, but um, I haven't seen that in a long time. So, Father George, it's good to see you. Father George, I was so disappointed you couldn't come out to Disney Springs last week. You, I am not kidding you. I don't know if if Deanna told you. You are a big part of the reason why I went down there because I was hoping you were going to be able to hook up. Um. So I'm sorry that I missed you while you were here. But you've been in my thoughts. I always keep you in my prayers too, brother. Um, so I love her name, Annabella Parmigiano. It almost sounds like a made-up name, like or something from The Sopranos. But I love Annabella, and the fact that your name, your last name, is my favorite cheese in the world. It says, I love the boathouse. The chopped salad is one of the best in the world. I agree. I agree. Amanda Bonner from Disney Trap. By the way, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. But what I really mean is when you're done here, because I don't want you to leave, go to DisneyTravelForAll.com and and not just go there, check out her stuff, check out her Instagram. She's good people doing good things, a new Florida transplant, and she's got some awesome, very unique stuff uh, over at DisneyTravelForAll.com. Uh, you've never been to the boathouse, Kimberly Bouchard. When you come down, you don't, you won't be banned, but I will take you by the hand and I will bring you there. And as if on cue, as if on cue, see, I didn't know you were going to be here, but I knew you were going to be here. Chef Bob, the Chef Bob of said boathouse fame 
is here. Um, Chef, I'm sorry we were there last week, and uh, you actually, you, like, there was nobody there. Like, you weren't there. Tony was there, so I'm sorry I missed you guys. I was hoping to see you before the holidays. I hope you and your family have a great Christmas, and I'm sure I'll see you, like, really, really soon because I'm starving, by the way. And clearly there's a lot of people um, – there's a lot of people that I need to take to the boathouse. Um, I snuck in with my wife for her birthday. No, I made a reservation. And I like was asking for you and all that, and I didn't want to bother you if you so. Um, but we always we always miss when you when you're not there when we come in to see you. So, um, Darlene loves the boathouse. Um, <laughs> Marcus, yes, I did a little Humpty Hump just for those. Uh, <laughs> Melanie Jones says Lou mentioned somebody and they appear. Uh, chef too. Yes, chef. You you need to meet and really sort of take in all the joy and the majesty that is uh, Becky Mankin. So we will we will definitely make that meal happen. So uh, if you do don't like your server, ask for another. No, our server was was wonderful. She was wonderful. So we always. I'm not. You know, I don't just say this. I, I always tell you the truth. We always have such a nice time when we are there. Um, your seafood challenge, Bo- the Bodas is a great, it's a Gibson Steakhouse. I have a tough time sometimes getting away, and the pulled, Chef Bob's award-winning pulled pork sandwich is stupid good. It's really, really good. Um, although I did have the tuna when I went there the other night, because I can't help it. Amanda says, the lobster bake at the Bodas is so good. Oh, how about the, so, Chef, I don't know if now, is it still, is it lobster mac and cheese? Or the crab mac and cheese. Oh, that's so good. And you usually get so much that you have a lot to take home. Oh. I didn't I don't know about the boathouse blueberry cheesecake. Need to eat another piece or three to make sure it's oh, oh it's okay. We had some the other night for Deanna's birthday. It is remains as phenomenal as it always has been. So um they do have little car boats for so if you order a kids meal, it comes in a little car boat box, but you can also go outside into the amphicars and it's a really nice time. To do a, you know what? I'm gonna give away one night. I will give away. We'll do an amphicar ride together. Maybe we'll have like a meal at Boathouse and an amphicar ride together. We'll have to make that happen too. Lots of lots of things in 20. Somebody write that down. I'm sure somebody will write that down. But we'll um we'll do that. I'll be visiting in July. You can you better take me to the boat. Wow. I'm now I'm just it's you sound like Becky. You better take me to the boathouse. Um. Jeremy says, I walked into the boathouse in September just long enough to drool all over the... Please don't drool on my food because it's so... Oh, the Lucky Ducks oysters are so good. And the tuna with the avocado is in... Words fail me about how good the tuna is. So, so good. Steaks are good. Oh, my God. I'm famished. I'm famished. Chef, I have to figure out a way to do like a meat of the month or like a WWW nation, like little meat thing, like outside over at the boathouse. And I said meat as in like get together, but now I'm also thinking about meat as in the steak and just how my, of course. So you chef, just so you know, my daughter goes in and orders a dozen oysters because Marion, my son now goes in the other night and he orders the stuffed filet. I'm like, dude, slow down, man. Podcast money. Just so you know, WWE Nation, um, being part of the nation, goes to a good cause. I mean, it ends up going to Boathouse, but it also... Yeah, so now my son is eating the filet and my daughter's eating the oysters. How about a couple of kids' meals? We just split a little Boathouse kids' meal one of these days. They're getting very expensive. So, uh, Colin Kendall, you need to go back just for the pulled pork sandwich. It's that good. I, I kid you not. I'm famished. If Boathouse was closer, I would be there. The Lobster Mac changes seasonally. That's what I love. You go in, not only are the different specials like all the time, but you never know what sort of little tweak there might be to the menu. It's like Christmas. Every time you go, little, little presents to unwrap. I would kill for a seafood tower right now. If I could snap my fingers or I dream a genie or wiggle my, whatever it is, and have a seafood tower right now, that would be the bomb.com. I don't know if kids say that anymore, but who cares? So... Um, boathouse meal in <laughs> um, the is coming back oh let's do a boat trip oh Chef Bob that's a good idea The Venet- that night we went out on the Venezia 
It was beautiful with the champagne and the strawberries. I, I mean, it was romantic in a non-romantic kind of way, but just a, such a, a lovely trip uh, up and down the waterways after a nice meal. That's that's a good time, right? That's that's what we'll give. A, that's what we'll do. We'll do a little trip on the Venetia one night. Mm, a band of honor. We need to have a one-on-one meeting at the dockside bar. We get a little seafood tower, a little port port, the truffle fries, and some blueberry cheesecake. I can pretty much order at the boathouse without looking at the menu. It was actually pretty funny when we went through the night. I had never seen the server before. She's like, hi, I'm so-and-so. Is this your first time at the boathouse? And I just fell off my chair laughing. The, the chair didn't have my name on it, but I, I wanted to be like, well, I, yes, I've been here once or twice, and we love it. Um even the napkins are delicious. Uh, Cheryl, have a good night. Coriander pepper crusted tuna. Chef Bob, that is one of the most wonderful things I have ever tasted. That that sear on the outside and that, that spice of the pepper and the, that subtle sweetness of the tuna when it's just cooked so right and it just sort of falls apart. Oh. That's what heaven must be like. It just must be a giant plate of coriander seared tuna. The only problem is I have a tough time not ordering the coriander seared tuna every time I go there. So, um, uh, Kimberly, have a good night and a very blessed Christmas as well. Becky Menken, there's a there the yeah, yeah. If you yes, you can treat, but it's a it it's. I will tell you something. When you get a, a fine cut of meat that is cooked just perfectly, it doesn't need anything on it. Um, it doesn't need salt. It doesn't need pepper. It comes out. It was like when you talk about a buttery texture and just the meat literally just melting away in your mouth. Ugh, that's exactly what it was like. A WWE and W. WDW Radio Nation family reunion. So that's what I'm talking about, Mike. We need to do some sort of a WDW Radio Nation event at the boathouse. So it'll be just for for people who are members of the nation. We'll do a little get together, maybe have a little nosh, some appetizers. Yeah, that's we're gonna we're gonna make that. I'll, I'll talk to Chef Chef. I'll have to come in and talk to you and Tony about doing a little w, a small WW Radio Nation get together. So. So is the championship pulled pork barbecue beat 135 teams and then was retired. Look at you, man. It's dude. It's that good. I'm not BSing you because you're sitting here like not here, but there Um, it's insanely good. There's a sweetness and a spicy to it. And you got on a pickle and those buttered rolls. I tomorrow. I'm going to the boathouse tomorrow. I have a meeting with me and a pulled pork sandwich and chef Bob and I have <clears throat> very important business stuff we need to discuss. So you can only order two dinners at boathouse. What would they be? The tuna. Um, it depends on what the fish special is. Um, they get their fish in fresh and that, that specials menu changes like literally uh, almost daily. Um, Oh God, that, Chef! When you had that, um, oh, it just came out of my head. And that Louisiana um, dish, it was phenomenal. It was so good. But I might get the tuna and the steak, so you get a little bit of the surf and turf action going. Um, and you got to get the truffle fries and the blueberry cheese. There's a lot of things, yeah. So, uh, Becky, you went to the, you brought it up. You went to the boathouse first. Without me. So you used up your boathouse credit on somebody else. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I would have taken you there. So, um. <laughs> uh, what would be the beverage? Eric, I'm, um, I'm a simple guy, man. I'm a, I'm a water with lemon type of dude. Um, they have an extensive wine menu and cocktail menu but yeah I, I usually play it pretty pretty straight so um so brenda chef can explain better it's not blackened it's got a, a, a coriander sear on it um 
so that the sear doesn't take away from the flavor. It, it's a complement to the flavor of the tuna. It doesn't sort of overpower. I think sometimes blackened takes away from the flavor of the fish or the chicken, whatever it is. This is all tuna all the time. Oh, it's so good. So, so good. <laughs> my infinity stone is the stone crab. That's, uh, oh, and the big seafood tower. Oh, my gosh. Chef, when What's-His-Face makes the, the seafood towers, they are absolute works of art. They are works of art. So, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I tune in and Lou's describing his food like he has his own food network show. It's the Boathouse show. It's I get excited. I, I get uh I get excited. Bob says, make T-shirts. Yeah, so when you go in, you got to ask for Chef Bob and wear your Lou sent me shirt. So, um, Michael, it's good to see you. Hope you have a, a great holiday as well. Jessica, get out of uh, Connecticut and, and come down here. So, Brenda, Chef can explain better how the coriander seared tuna is prepared and what it's it, – it, it's there's a couple – so you have like a – Chef, like fire-roasted peppers – uh, on the side, I mean, if you want, if you're still here and want to describe exactly what it is, let, oh, Bob, I would, I, I can't tomorrow. I've got a thing tomorrow. Oh, the seafood terrible. That's it. God, it was so good, so so good. Oh, I couldn't. I when it was on the specials menu, I never even made it to the big menu. So, um, Keith Groshans, it's good to see you, man. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. I been thank you for all your kind and funny words on the uh, on some of the stuff we've been talking about on the site, and look forward to seeing you again soon, brother. You're doing a lot of good stuff and helping out a lot of people, and I and I can see a difference in their business and, and their brand. So if you want to plug away who you are and what you do, and if I could just tell them to go to Rocket, it's RocketJuiced.com. I think, I think I got that right. Um, you are a, a brilliant designer who is not only um, amazing to work with, but you get it and you understand it, and you're just a good dude, man. So I appreciate your brother. Um, so, Chef, is that is that Australian grass-fed ribeye that I tasted a, a month or so ago? Is that on the menu now? Because that was insanely good. There was a that had a, a different flavor to that cut of meat that I had ever had before. Phil Schwab, Merry Christmas to you as well. Becky, of course, needs a stuffed filet. Just give me the most expensive item on the menu and then double it. Um, the stuffed filet is, is awesome. It is awesome. So um, does Boathouse have ice wine? I will say possibly. So Chef Bob, I wish Chef Bob could like just read this. Season heavy salt and pepper, then roasted 515 minutes, then turned down to 275 internal rest for it's at it's the rest that's where the flavor gets all sucked into the tuna and oh it's so so good crazy hungry i am and i have to still have to come in chef are you still doing that thing on the weekend that we talked about i still have to come and check that out too um yes rocketjuiced.com big things in 2019 at rocketjuice.com, according, according to Keith Grosan. So if you like logos like the W Alaska Cruise and the Lou Sent Me and so many others, that's the guy that did it. Roll the tuna in coriander, black pepper, salt mix, seat 30 seconds, sear 30 seconds per side in cast iron, Asian soy lime vinaigrette. That's the magic right there. That's it. That's the little, like, that's a little bit of, of sprinkle of, awesomeness that they have on there Whew. i'm get, i'm literally like getting the the hunger sweats is that a thing chef bob says no ice wine oh that's a prime rib wrestle whatever i'm so hungry i'm delirious i'm famished because i ended up having chick-fil-a for dinner to, and by eating chick-fil-a i mean i literally inhaled my chick-fil-a in like 30 seconds um Chef Bomb says they have Moscato. Does Boathouse have a chef's table? Chef Bob, do they? Uh, Colin Kendall, I do need a towel. I'm I'm a little verklempt um, at this point. Becky, of course, says I'm all in for Moscato. Now we're a cooking show. Yeah, remember when we used to talk about Disney World and Disney stuff? And it all of a sudden it became the Boathouse show. I need to get a Boathouse logo and just put that right there um, and put a picture of Chef Bob. Keith needs to get that tuna. Dude, go in there tomorrow. Say, I saw Chef Bob last night, and he told me to get the tuna because he kind of did, and so did I. 
I promise you will not be disappointed. If you are, call me. I can be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> Chef Bob says no to Chick-fil-A. Listen, it's what Deanna brought home. I had to eat quickly. She, If Boathouse, if Boathouse had a drive-up window that was like five minutes from my house, I would, yeah, I would never eat anywhere else. So, Whew. Boathouse, Uber Eats, Tulu. It's that. But you got to eat it there. Like, there's something about it, it coming out fresh and the service and the atmosphere and the people and the water and, yeah. So, whew. Uh Melanie Jones says, you can't go wrong with anything on the menu. I agree. And we should go eat there again and again and again. No chef table. We do have the 24-foot Chris Craft table, which is so much fun to eat in. Um, when we did the, the live review, that's where we were. Um, yeah, we've had we've had some not really nice meals in that, and it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> David Potts says, I remember when we went. So, David, I, you know, and there's going to be some things coming in 2019, and we'll talk about that when 2019 comes in terms of, of some format stuff that we're going to do in terms of, of the live stuff. But um, we're just, you know, like I said, I was going to do the um, – the golf cart through Fort Wilderness tonight, but um, does Deanna just laugh every time you say boathouse? No, she starts getting dressed and and walking out the door, thinking that we're going. So, um, boathouse is the best service I've ever had, without question. <laughs> Jeremiah says boathouse drive up window, be still my beating heart. No kidding, no kidding. A drinking shot, a drink game, a shot. Every time I say boathouse, I would not do that because I would not want to be responsible for any alcohol-related incidents um, that may happen as a result. Because even when you're not here, Bob, um, boathouse always invariably uh, comes up. So drive up Lakeside. Imagine driving up your amphicar. It would be like an old 50s thing. You have sort of the little tray on your window of the amphicar, and the, the captain drives you around while you eat in your that's not going to be bad either. Uh, do I have a January meet of the month planned? As a matter of fact, I do. And I was not smart enough to get that. Hold on a second. Bear with me. Um, I'm going to. It is once again over marathon weekend, but I'm just quickly going to grab the logo so I can show you. Um Hopefully I'm grabbing the right one. There you go. Yeah, so as always, it's going to be over Marathon Weekend, and it, that is going to be Saturday, January 12th from one thirty to 3 at the Tomorrowland Terrace in the Magic Kingdom. Go to the events page over on Facebook, RSVP. Come alone. Bring the kids. Bring your friends. It doesn't matter. Anybody and everybody is welcome, and uh, and that's always a good time. I always look forward to the Marathon Weekend. We get a lot of people, and, and usually, this is not a spoiler alert, but I guess to a certain degree, is if you know if you've been there, in the past, um, a lot of times we'll, we'll we'll have a Make-A-Wish family there um, as, as a little special surprise. So, um, yeah, we've got some things in the works for January. So, um, I have no idea when marathon weekends are. Is it a bad thing? No, it's not. Because if you start coming, we're going to make you get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to come cheer. So, and I, and I know you don't want to necessarily do that as well, but... Um, Zachary Carver says, Christina, are we really taking Lou to Boathouse? Because I think at the end of his sentence, he's going, because that could potentially be an expensive meal. I'm a cheap date. I, I won't go overboard. I promise. I won't get the stuffed filet, but the coriander sear tuna. No, you know what? And I, I will tell you this, too. The um, the award-winning pulled pork sandwich is a ridiculously good value, too, because you get a lot of food, a lot of pork on there. You get this phenomenal fries on the side. I think it's 16 or eighteen dollars, it's 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 one of the least expensive items on the menu, and it's so so stupid good. If Boathouse was closer, I would be there. I would literally, I would take the computer in the car and I would drive there live, and we would just do it there. <laughs> How can I get top fan? So, Chef, I don't control that top fan thing. It's a Facebook thing. I actually don't like that at all. I don't like the word fan. You absolutely are a top friend, brother. You always have been. You've always been so good to me. So 
And I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I'm sure there's plenty of other things you could be doing with your Wednesday night. So uh, I have no control over that. It's something that that Facebook does by way of interactions, engagements. I, I have no idea. But you're commenting so much tonight. Who knows? But you'll always be a top friend in my book. And you keep making that tuna, and our relationship will never will never waver. So. Um, do a live show. I want to do a live show. I, last time I saw Steve, I, I think I mentioned to him, we got to we gotta make that happen. I would love to do that from there. We can go outside. We can go in the back. You can come and show some of the different, the, the different uh, culinary creations that you and your team make. People can see just how nice the staff is there. Good Gandhi, your staff is so nice. Um... Chef says, do a live show from Boathouse. Who am I to argue? Who am I to argue? We will definitely have to, uh, we will definitely have to make that happen one of these days very, 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 very soon. I'm having Boathouse withdrawals. It's only been about a week. Hi, my name is Lou. It's been a week since my last Boathouse visit. Hi, Lou. I, I need to go back. I need to go back. I actually, the last time I was there, too, I wanted to eat more, and I didn't. I should have. Um, so we'll have to remedy that. And going to going there without seeing you there is um is not is just not as good. So uh Mimi says Paul and I will definitely take you there when we move and become cool kids like you and Deanna. Listen, everybody's a cool kid at the boathouse. And you tell them Lou sent you and you say hi to Chef Bob and uh they, listen, they, they will be treating you right no matter what. But all the cool kids love the boathouse. Keith, make that on a shirt. All the cool kids dig the boathouse because we do. So, um, is Becky here in February? I I don't. Who knows? She's always here. She's always here, even though she goes to boathouse without me. That's fine. Hey, Marcus, it's good seeing you, brother man. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you not just showing up on Wednesday nights, but being part of the Nation family. I hope you guys have a great Christmas and New Year's, and I will talk to you soon, buddy. Donald says, how about auction off a dinner with Lou at the boathouse for Make-A-Wish? Marie and I would bid. That's, you know, we were, we've been talking about doing another Make-A-Wish auction. Um, if you think that's an item that would garner some bids, then maybe we need to make that happen. <laughs> uh, Jennifer says, rename the show Lou Loves Boathouse. I'm really sad I wasn't able to go on my last trip. Jennifer, you have to come back. And you got to do it again. So, uh, Chef Bob, have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas and holiday. And I'll definitely see you after the new year, if not before. I might try, try and sneak over for lunch one day. Um, I'm definitely going to try and sneak over for lunch one day. So, uh, David Potts, don't, it's, 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 come on, man. Keep the friendship intact. No grease tape for charity. So, um, yeah, I, I wish I, I wish I could. Um, I, I say I wish I could cook, but I'm happy just eating. Who, who am I kidding? Well, I don't want to confuse things by uh, by cooking. So um, let's see. Uh, why don't we do? Let me see. What time? It's almost nine o'clock, and I know you guys are in the midst of your holiday preparations, or you're eating the raw Christmas cookie dough downstairs as you are waiting. But I do want to give something away. So. I think I posted it in the Box People group. Mine is already on my tree. But I got this ornament that William made. It is a Box People. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. An acrylic engraved. Oh, look, I just noticed this one has... The little mini bow, which you can sort of, I guess you can take off or leave on if you want. So I would love to give this away to a member, you guys. So I don't, that's why I don't do these on just regular social and other things. So since it's a box people ornament, I want it to be won by somebody who is a true box person. So why don't we do this? Why don't I, you know what? I'll keep it simple. So this week's podcast obviously is about Mary Poppins Returns, which comes out tonight. Make sure you get your tickets. You're going to love it. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. You're going to sing along and then download the uh, the soundtrack. Why don't we do this? Why don't I ask you guys to share the Mary Poppins Return podcast 
on the Facebook, on the Insta, on the Twitter. Uh, and when you do, use hashtag WW Radio. I will follow that hashtag for one week, right? I'll give this away next week. And I will randomly select across all platforms one person who shares that episode out. So you've got to share a link to that episode www.radios.com slash 539. Man, the numbers are flying by. And then next week, I will randomly select a winner. I know it's going to be after Christmas, but look, what can I tell you? Um, and you will get this handy-dandy ornament or decorative acrylic cutout thing um, that you can hang in your office or something. How's that? You dig? You dig. It's that simple. I'll, I'll try and remember to post... In the group, um, just but all you need to do is share out a link to this week's episode. Use hashtag uh, WW Radio if you want to if you want to tag me in it, so you make sure I see it. That might be good as well. I'm at Lou Mangello everywhere, and uh, and I will randomly select one and send the ornament out to you um, soon. So, uh, Stuart, I only have one. I only have one to give away. Again, William, thank you so much. I'm going to mispronounce your name again. It's William Shrubs. Ski. It's William. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm happy to give it away, and I'm happy that you are still here because I almost forgot until I saw it on the side because I got Boathouse on the brain, and I need to go put on pants and get to the Boathouse before they close. So, uh, Ashley, have a good night. Um, Mimi, can't wait to go see it going on Saturday again next week. The day after Christmas, we'll be live from here, from somewhere. I want to hear your thoughts about um, about Mary Poppins Returns. Jeremy Goff, I agree with you about the WW Ornament Exchange. Monstrous. Thank you to our WW Radio elf. I will not say who she is, but her name begins with S, and she is awesome, and this happened because of her. I think we had total, um, I think there was 230 people that participated in the ornament, ex the, the sort of Secret Santa ornament exchange. Um, I love the ornaments that I got. I, I would show you, but they're down on my tree already. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Chris, have a good Christmas. Chris Bannis. Uh, John Jones is you as well. Um, I'm not going to, there's, I'm not going to plug anything. I'm not going to plug anything other than just giving thanks to all of you who are part of the nation family. Um, in this time of year, I, I only will ask you to do this which is, look, you, you work all year long. Whatever it is that you do, whether you're working at school, you're working at your job, you're working at home, you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, you work as hard as you do and as long as you do for the benefit of the people that you love. Make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that includes yourself. Put get, get away from this for a little while. Get away from this for a little while. Turn off the TV Spend time with your family. Spend time with those that you love. You know, as sort of the year comes to an end and we start looking back at, 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 at people we've lost, you know, there's no calendar. There's no timetable. We don't know when the people that we're closest to aren't going to be there anymore. You work as hard as you do and, and, and struggle as much as you do so that you can enjoy times like this. The holidays, the new year, the vacation, if you've got some, spend it with those that you love. Um, Reach out to those maybe that you haven't talked to in a long time and just let them know that uh, that you're still there. Um, sometimes, like I said, with my little FedEx buddy today, <coughs> sometimes those little gestures mean a lot. And if it's a text, if it's a letter, if it's a postcard, if it's a Japanese Kit Kat, whatever it is that you send, um, just send good, good stuff to other people. And to that point, I want you to know in, in this time of... of I spent a lot of time around the holidays reflecting um, on on we talk about presents and gifts and all the the chaos that that ensues. <coughs> the gifts that matter most are not the ones that fit under the tree. The gifts that matter most are the ones that that fit around the table, um, and you may not physically be here because you couldn't fit into my tiny little office, but. You are always virtually around my table, in the box, at the boathouse, um, and I and I'm here and I do what I do and I'm blessed every day because of you. And that is the best, most incredibly rewarding 
um, and humbling gift I could ever receive. And you, um, you know, you guys play Santa Claus to me every single day. And I want you to know how much I, I appreciate the gift of your time and your love and support and attention. And most importantly, your friendship. Um, that is the thing that uh, I don't have to open on, on Christmas Day because I get it every single week. And you show it in so many ways. So I hope that you and your family have been having a wonderful holiday season. Have a great Christmas. Make it a delicious one. Make it a loving one. Make it a memorable one. Make it a safe one. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys next week. We'll either be here. Maybe we'll be uh, at Fort Wilderness. I don't know. But hopefully I will see you then. And uh, have a wonderful, happy, blessed holiday. Love you.